This is a video of how I replaced the subframe bushings on my 190E. Um, the guides I had seen online uh, just didn't do it the way I'm doing it with some uh, tools I bought from Home Depot, so I figured I'd show how I did it. So I'm removing the uh, lower shock bolt, and then I'm jacking up on the differential to take the weight off the subframe, and then uh, removing the two subframe bolts. This is all sped up eight times. It took me about an hour and a half total to do this one side. And this side has a fuel line which goes under the subframe so as you're lowering it you kind of have to watch out that you don't bind up the fuel line. The other side doesn't have that issue. So you can lower it a little more if you want for more access. So removing the front mount, um, all the other guides I had seen said kind of punch out the center of it and then somehow destroy the outside to get it out. Um, doing the other side I figured out you can just take a chisel and create some separation between the subframe and the mount and then if you get enough you can use some screwdrivers and stuff to pry it out without touching the center. I saw some other videos. Uh, it's talking about subframe bushings and they mentioned you can use some heat to kind of soften up the rubber. I did that on the other side and it seemed fine. I'm going to do it on this side because it didn't seem like it was moving. I'm not really sure if it's necessary or not, but I'm heating it up to about 350 degrees. I'm checking to see if it's that hot. No. Then once you warm it up, you just kind of start at the spot closest to you and work your way around to the two sides and then at that point you can kind of just pry back and forth. This angle's not very good because I wasn't paying attention to where the camera was as I was doing this. But I'm mostly just kind of rocking it back and forth and up and down to try to just get a little bit of room. Once you can get some room you can uh, jam some screwdrivers in there and create a lever. The screwdriver I was using had a square shank so you can uh, press it right up against the side of the bushing and once you get it going a little bit it, it comes out pretty easily. I'm just rocking. I'm just going side to side. I think it took about 10 minutes for me to get this out. I think the other side was about the same, doing the same kind of process. In the rear, I had seen, all, everyone I had seen, they just kind of somehow pried it out with a screwdriver or something, or they didn't touch them. So I tried to do that, and I couldn't get it out. So I went and I found this piece at Home Depot, this 4-inch uh, pipe adapter, which um, this, and there's a shorter one, this one, that one. Those have like a 4-inch inside diameter exactly, so those are the right size. You should you could take the bushing with you to, to the hardware store to make sure, but a lot of the other PVC fittings are more like four and a quarter and I think those are too big to to do what I want. There's a you have to take a, about a 120 degree chunk out for it to fit flush against the subframe and with the larger one it'll interfere with the lower control arm um, that little bracket that pops out where the plastic piece screws into. So you have to remove the, uh, you have to get the control arm out of the way. But since you lowered the subframe, there's no stress on the spring, so you can just pull it out. I'm putting uh, some washers and a nut that's half inch threaded rod. And I put uh, like axle grease on the threaded rod to 
lower the friction and then you place the, uh, the PVC piece and then underneath that are some uh, electrical plates with a center punch out I think for a four inch electrical box there's about three of them stacked up against each other and then a half inch coupling nut those are the, the plates and then I'm using a uh, ratchet with the the centers exposed so you can thread it onto a rod it's kinda like a gear wrench um, ratcheting wrench and then with the hole cut in the side of the PVC you can see the mount lowering and then it just falls out That's what the PVC piece looks like after I did both sides. To install the new one, um, you're going to want to use a lot of... I use soap and rotter. I think you can also use silicone lube. I didn't use any lube on the other side, on the rear ones, and uh, they bound up pretty bad, so on this side I'm using uh, a ton of soap and water. I'm using these two um, floor flanges, they're about the right size to uh, sandwich the mount and half inch threaded rod is too big, this is 7 16 but I think you could use 3 8 too which they probably have at more hardware stores. The 7 16 stuff I got from uh, Granger and then I'm using uh, like two chisels to push on the outside of the mount because I don't want to push on the center because it sits uh, slightly proud above the outside and then you just screw it in on the rear um, this is what the first time I tried it with no lube and it tore up the mount so I'm hitting it pretty good with the soapy water on the mount and then on the the subframe too. This bracket I found uh, fits pretty much perfectly to push on the outsides of the mount. It's a uh, like an electrical box from Home Depot and then I've got the uh, electrical plates and then the half inch threaded rod. The top has two allen keys because there's like two wings from the mount that have to kind of go above the, the surface of the subframe turned this thing around because I thought it was binding up because I used the same box on the other side and it got kind of bent up but actually as I was putting this in it kind of self-corrected so it worked out pretty good those are the same plates I was using before that's the box and that's just a nut and some washers and then the two allen keys I'm just showing this because there's not a lot of room to fit this stuff um, above where that bolt hole is for the uh, subframe bolt. One other thing, I used the electrical box to push on the outside because um, you could push on the center with some washers behind the nut, but it, it seemed like that wouldn't bottom out the mount as well because there's some elasticity between the center of the mount and the outside, so that's why pushing on the outside seems to work better. But that's pretty much it. It was, uh, this side went real, real smooth. The other side took a while to figure out the process. So, hope this helps.